Hi, I'm Mark Childs from FMCG Institute. This is the second of a four-part series covering our Barcelona Masterclass titled Rethinking Trading Strategy. This video brings you an important briefing from Martin Adkin. Martin is the Global Managing Director of Brand Learning Sales Practice, and he's going to be talking to you about preparing for change, a very important element of the masterclass that we ran. I invited Martin to participate in the masterclass because of the excellent reputation brand learning has for capability development and change management. Critical issues as we challenge manufacturers to rethink the way they approach the development of trading strategy. Here's Martin. Really this morning is about talking about how do we take the rethinking of trading strategy and that overall approach and how do we go about building the capability of our teams to deliver it uh, and how do we go about leading the change. So that's effectively what we want to cover off this morning. What do we want to cover off today? So what, what we want to do is firstly review the core drivers of capability. So when we're talking about capability, what is it that we're talking about and therefore what is it that you need to do uh, in order to implement the trading strategy approach that we've got. Uh, and then after the break, we will just explore sort of what we call the human side of change. Um, so, you know, lots written about change management, lots of process around change management. We want to focus in on the people aspect of change management and what it really takes to get your team to embrace change and be involved in that change uh, and dri drive through uh, to, to creating a different approach uh, to trading strategy. The, the industry is at a very interesting point, isn't it? Because actually a lot of FMCG suppliers today, the, the P&L is hurting big time, yet the, tra the trade are also hurting big time and they're getting disrupted. And therefore, we know where they go when they need money and that's to the supplier base. And, and that, you know, I certainly talk to a number of my clients and they're basically saying, we can't keep going. We, I mean, literally, we are stopping investing because there, there's nothing more to squeeze out. Um, so eventually, this trading strategy, hopefully, something will happen that allows uh, a, a different way of, of trying to re-stimulate growth within the marketplace by working in a different way with uh, suppliers and retailers. But uh, it, I think overall, as we've talked, it, it is a game of inches, yeah? So it is the small things that add up to making a big change here. So what, what we're going to do is look at some of the things that we think can be done to start to put in place uh, a shift in the trading strategy thinking, okay? Now, this, this is our view of capability, so it's, it's much broader than just skill. So often, often that is just, oh, we need to build the capability of the team, well, people go to scrape skills. If you want to create enduring change, you have to look at all of the dimensions here, okay? And, and so when we're talking about building capability and trading strategy, you've got to look at all of the dimensions around, the, around this wheel, okay? Uh, and right at the center, it starts with having a clear understanding of the strategy that you want to put in place. Okay, so there's no point in trying to shift the organization unless you're absolutely clear and absolutely aligned on what the strategy is that you're trying to put in place. Now, th th this applies to putting and rethinking a trading strategy. It can apply to any initiative that you're trying to, to, trying to drive within your function uh, and or organization. So it starts with the strategy. Uh, and then from there, as what it says, it's, it's around the, the people, organization, process, and skills, okay? So the, um, when we're talking capability, it's that broad sense of capability around, around the wheel. Uh, and what we wanna do is think about that in the context of trading strategy, okay? Uh, it's important as we go through this that everyone's clear what we mean by each of these, yeah? Because otherwise we can't assess. So let, let's just make sure that we're all clear. So in terms of business strategy, uh, I mean, there's a few things here, and we've talked a lot about this yesterday, but the, the whole organization needs to be clear on the, the customer mission. So that sits above the trading strategy, but it's, it's and, and, and um, Mark talked about this yesterday, you know, what, what is it that we want customers to represent within our business? And we'll often challenge our clients to say, well, you know, what, if you look at your overall business strategy, what role are customers playing? And if you do that at a senior level, it's very interesting in terms of the different views you get. You know, either they're a pain in the backside or they, they, 
you know, extracting profit from, our, from, from, from us, or actually they're an absolutely crucial partner in delivering a growth that we want to. So you know, being really clear on the mission and the role that customers play in your organization is crucial. Um, and then ensuring that the trading strategy that you put in place is aligned to that business ambition and, and that customer mission. Okay, so thinking about the design of that trading strategy, and again, we talked about that yesterday, what do we want that to look like? Uh, and then having some clear set of what we would call guiding principles around that trading strategy that help you give clarity to people without constraining them completely. Okay, but there are certain things as an organization that you, you there are boundaries that you want to put against um, the way you trade. So a classic is we don't do private label. Well, that's, that's a clear principle um, and, and you know, probably one that you're not going to shift on. So, so setting those, those guiding principles around the strategy. Okay. Okay, the next then is around process, and you know, the list here could go on and on, but uh, what we've tried to do is pick some of the core ones that we think go to the heart of trading strategy. So the first is around customer segmentation and having clarity on your, your, how you segment your customers, how you prioritize them, and that that then drives your investment decisions. Okay, now different businesses have different philosophies on this, but what you do need to know is the role that each customer is playing in your, in your portfolio and therefore how you want to be investing because it has a big implication in terms of how you then engage uh, and potentially shift investment. Um, then we've talked about the three-year trading strategy. So what's the medium-term um, strategy that you want to put in place around customer investment? So we can look at all the history. How do we want that to look going forward What's, what is that three-year plan? And you can do that at a macro level. So that might be about how, how do we shift from non-performing into performing trade terms, uh, and then equally at a customer level in terms of how do we close gaps between customers and or shift investment between customers. But having a clear three-year view, we think is absolutely critical to making a shift. Because if you don't have that, you can't provide guidance to the teams. Uh, and each of your customer teams should know for their customer where it sits in prioritization and where it sits in terms of that three-year strategy in terms of what we're trying to achieve with that customer. Earlier we talked about alignment, so the model is very strongly focused on alignment uh, and, and you know, again here what we're looking at is saying how the customer strategy, how much is that in, embedded into your commercial business planning? The IBP called many different things in many different companies, but how much is the customer talked about in the commercial organization and how much is the customer strategy brought in from the field, as you, as you, as you say, Sasha, brought into to the table in, in terms of discussion. Um, and the other way around too, which is how closely aligned are your customer plans with where you're trying to go from a channel and brand perspective. So that interplay uh, ar around bringing those things together, which creates uh, a stronger plan for the customer, hopefully that joint plan that we talked about yesterday, uh, but equally is delivering against the, the requirements for the business. In terms of organization, um, critical is the cross-functional alignment to the trading strategy. So again, Mark talked about this a lot yesterday, but that internal alignment is absolutely crucial. You can't just have it being a sales thing. You've got to get the organization buying in behind it. Um, and equally to that is that there's cross-functional commitment to the delivery of the customer strategies. Then skills, again, we could have a long, long list of skills here, but you, know, you need to enable the key customer managers, as we would call them, to be able to uh, plan correctly. So developing a robust plan internally and externally aligned that has it within it the trading strategy and where you want to go. Um, their ability to create compelling value-based value -based selling propositions around how they're going to um, create mutual value with customers in the way that they're, they're taking propositions to market, and then a robust negotiation process linked to that. And obviously the selling and negotiation going very strongly together as Warren taught yesterday uh, in terms of persuasion and negotiation. So those absolutely crucial if you want to shift the needle on the trading strategy, you're gonna to have to enable your people and, and build the skills for them to be able to take a different approach. Leadership have gotta show it's important. Um, and something like trading strategy, that's gotta start right at the top of the organization.
And then just the, the, the final thought then is just around that, that employee in, involvement and audiences. So um, again, just, just think about as you lead change, who are the people who are going to be affected? So, and, and there are different degrees of who is affected, but all, all people are going to need to embrace it. And therefore, what are, what are the objectives in terms of what's the shift in behavior that you need people to make? And that can be cross-functional shifts in behavior, it can be your own team, but what, what's the shift that you need to make? Uh, and then design your communication plan accordingly. So just in summary, you know, in terms of you know, planning the change, we spent two days talking about rethinking trading strategy. It's we've very clear it's not easy. Um, it is about the, you know, the, the game of the inches. So what are all the little things that we can do that ultimately will make a big difference? Um, and, and to, do, to, to put that change in place, you've got to have a very clear capability plan. And hopefully I've explained what we mean by capability in the broadest sense of the word. Uh, and having a plan around it, and then once you've got that plan, leading it through people uh, and involving people in it is critical for success. Martin and I also collaborated on bringing together Brand Learning's change management methodology and the Institute's equip model. It formed an important part of the Masterclass series that's now available on video. This is Mark Childs from FMCG Institute. Thanks for watching.